Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is not morning time. I feel like I'm normally saying good morning. It is five o'clock right now and I am taking you through our evening routine. Dinner, handling the witching hour, cleaning up our nighttime cleanup routine slash bed routine, and preparation for tomorrow's festivities. So let's go. What's wrong? Is it five o'clock? Is it witching hour? Huh? Stop following me around. Currently the house is a wreck and I have no energy. My big girls are being helpers because they want to have a hot tea and I told them if they helped me cleaned up they could have a hot tea. I did just make a coffee and that's kind of like helping me out a little bit. So I finally broke down the other day and ordered me some um, Nespresso pods. If you have never had a Nespresso coffee, it's amazing. So I'm having that to get me some energy and then I'm going to figure out what I'm making for dinner. Oh uh, wait, y'all are done cleaning? All right, so I'm gonna make you guys some hot tea. So the first thing that I always do before I even start on dinner, whether I know what I'm cooking or not, is I get my working environment ready. So I'm going to put up all this and I'm going to put away, I have some dishes here and I'm just gonna have like a kind of clean, chill work environment. That way my I can think clear and be ready to make a mess. plant-based meal you don't really have to think about everything like coordinating so I know back before we went plant-based I used to think oh well I have chicken I can make and it would have to be like a specific chicken dish with a certain carb and a certain veg now I just look in our refrigerator and I'm like hmm this is what I have so like tonight I have broccoli mushrooms squash and I'm I, like I'm just taking stuff out right now and then it's gonna be something also, let me mention that it is hot outside, so I'm really not trying to use my stove right now and have heat pumping in the house. It's so loud in here. Here's another pro tip. If you have children and you're trying to cook a dinner, just don't. Just don't cook a dinner. Just, just don't try. Uh, I'm kind of serious, kind of kidding, kind of going crazy. So. Anyway, everything's going on the grill really fast. I'm gonna see it all in the oven, then we're gonna get it all hooked up, and then we're gonna go. Let's get started on dinner. A tip to keeping your cutting board from wobbling around is just to place a towel, or I just use an oven mitt today, and just put that under your board for stability. And the first thing that I always do before I even start cooking is to sharpen your knife. It's actually a lot more dangerous to use a dull knife when you're chopping than a sharp knife. It can slip a lot easier, so sharpen your knife. Next, I will set up a little compost or trash bucket. If you're not composting, this still applies to you. Just set a bucket, that way you can throw your scraps or any trash so you're not running back and forth while you're chopping your vegetables. 
My first foil packet will just have squash and onions in it. And then my second foil packet will have mushrooms and broccoli. Keep in mind that all vegetables have different cooking times. So obviously mushrooms cook a lot faster than broccoli because broccoli is very fibrous and dense. So because of this, I'm actually cutting my mushrooms into big cubes. So I actually just quarter them. For my broccoli, I just cut, I'm cutting away the thicker bottom stem because that actually takes a little bit longer to cook. So I'll show you how I do that now. So I actually will cut the bottom stem pretty thin um, and this will actually help make sure that everything cooks at about the same time and a lot of times with the bottom stem being so fibrous it's not as enjoyable or it seems to like get eaten last so when you cut it really thin like this it actually softens it a lot better so once I have the broccoli and mushroom packet pretty much ready, I'm actually going to remove some of the florets and separate them from what I'm actually going to be cooking. And the reason for this is because there's a compound, a chemical compound found within cruciferous vegetables called sulforaphane. But in order for your body to actually absorb this sulforaphane, it needs an enzyme that's only found within the raw form of this vegetable. So I pretty much will just separate a little bit of the broccoli and put some aside and I will finely mince it up and once the broccoli and mushrooms are finished cooking and they've cooled a bit then I'll just add in this raw version of the broccoli and this will ensure that we're getting all the sulforaphane from our vegetables. Sulforaphane is known as a brain boosting substance because it actually has the ability to cross the blood brain barrier so it's really great for anything neurological, great for anxiety, stress, and there's studies that actually link it to a reduced risk in cancer, as well as Alzheimer's. Aww. So in this one, I have mushrooms and broccoli, onion and squash, and these are, oh, let me grab the packet these little meatless Italian sausage things. There's only two of them in there actually because I didn't have that many left. As with anything you're cooking on the grill, you need to be familiar with the hot spots on your grill. I did get my grill up, up to almost 500 before I actually started putting everything on. But then as you see, I actually turned the burners off on the side that I have the potatoes because I just need those to roast. I don't want them to actually like caramelize or anything like that. I'm just getting the residual heat um, from the grill. So I turn the burners off on that side and as I'm going through and stirring everything through the cooking process, I'll move everything around as needed or I'll take like the mushrooms will be done probably before the potato. So I'll probably take that packet off first. So anyway, I'll just salt and pepper everything shut the lid and then just come back periodically and check everything as it goes. This makes it really easy to not have to be standing over the stove all night. She is literally the best big sister in the world. As I'm cooking, she's over here pushing the babies. Wanna get, up? Wanna get down? You wanna get down? <laughs> Wee! As long as we eat healthy, we won't get that. Look at how dirty these girls are. Daisy, look at mama. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, sorry. Yeah, I can't let, I can't stop. Instead of fighting nature here and trying to bring her inside and then clean the inside and have a big mess somewhere else, we're gonna take the pool and we're gonna have a pool party. Pre-dinner festivities, she's about to pass out. She will be Watch eating it. and going to sleep. Look at her. <laughs> anyway, I have a huge pot of water that's boiling right now because <clears throat> it is kind of cold. So I'm just gonna put the hot water in here. We're gonna put a little bit of bubbles and fill this up and that is gonna be how we get cleaned bubbles. off. The We're taking a bath on the porch. Yay. Yeah. Wait, maybe we should get the bathtub. No, we're not doing that. So we'll do a bath outside. Isn't that crazy? Hi, Emmy. Hi. What are I'm you doing? I'm getting away. I'm tasting the sausage. So, yeah, guys. 
so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a bath. If you wanna see it. Yes, mama put in the warm water in. So this was our completed dinner. To go on top of the potato, we just put a dollop of our cashew sour cream. And I did promise you guys that recipe, so we will go into that now. To start this recipe, you will want to soak your cashews overnight, especially if you're just using a regular blender. I am using a Vitamix, a high power, this is a very like high powered blender. So I cannot promise that the consistency will be the same with a regular blender because I have not used it. So to this, all we are doing is throwing in all of our ingredients into the blender and reserving our, the little bit of liquid that we do have. And the for the water that we are adding, you will just add a little bit of water at a time. You're really just trying to make sure that it's blending all the way. And then as soon as it catches and everything is actually blending together, do not add any more water. It is not a specific set amount of water for this recipe. It is just so that it'll get the blender moving. I will have the full recipe linked below. This is a very simple recipe today. I did add a little bit of Dijon mustard. That's not in my original recipe, but just play around with the flavors and kind of tweak it to however you want it to be. I add salt just so that it takes away the sweetness of the cashews. This is not supposed to be really salty. You're really just going for a tangy kind of sour cream flavor. <laughs> is it yummy? Is it yummy? Hey, Rose. Hey. Rosie. Hey. Welcome to an evening routine with the Stedmans. So dinner is done. We ate on the porch tonight. The only downfall to eating outside is that we have to fight mosquitoes, but we do use these little thermocell mosquito repellents and those seem to work really well. Once dinner is done, me and my husband will knock out cleaning up and it's awesome when we do it outside because we can just spray everything off with the hose and it makes for a really easy cleanup. And while we were actually cleaning up, we put the water hose underneath the trampoline for the kids and let them play, and it kind of kept them out of our way. What do you think? <laughs> Once the kids were over the whole trampoline festivities, they started heading in, and that's when we stopped what we were doing to kind of catch back up with them. So Frankie took the twins and started bathing them, and I threw the big girls in the shower, and then I also started on some laundry. So laundry for me is something that I don't have like one or two set days that I actually do laundry. Laundry is a never ending process and this is the only way that I can actually stay on top of laundry is just to keep loads of laundry going at all times. So this is what I did and as I was finishing up the laundry, Frankie headed out back outside to go ahead and clean up the little bit of messes that we had left from the sprinkler and just some clothes or whatever the kids had left outside. With kids, there's always stuff laying around the house and the biggest and easiest way that I found to just get everything organized is just to take a laundry basket, throw everything in it, and then at the end of the night, just organize it and put everything back where it belongs. Because I find myself, if I'm picking things up individually and walking across the house to put one thing over here and back to the other side to put something somewhere else, I'm just honestly wasting my time. So I just took a second to start grabbing a bunch of stuff and throwing it in the laundry basket. I went ahead and dumped a load of laundry on our bed because by doing that, we are obligated to folding it before going to bed. And then I just get checked in on the big girls. Cold water. Okay, cold water? Okay. Now that everyone was content in their taking showers and baths, we both met back up in the kitchen again to continue with our uh, dinner cleanup. So Frankie went ahead and was putting food away while I was doing dishes. And during this time, this is when he actually will normally go ahead and make his lunch with whatever leftovers we have. That way that's out of the way as well. And then we don't have to try to figure out in the morning what he's gonna have or he's not always having to buy lunch while while he's out so this is a great tip for anybody that um, has to eat at work or anything like that just go ahead and always make double portions or extras of whatever your dinner was and just go ahead and have that available so that you can have lunches throughout the week so we never have a set time for how long the babies stay in the bath or when we have to take them out we just kind of 
get as much done as we can until we hear one of them fussing and then we'll go ahead and get them out at that point so this was that point they were fussing ready to get out and this is the part me and frankie usually tag team because it's a lot easier for both of us just to grab a baby and get them dressed at the same time so we can continue to have them on the same schedule versus one of us getting one ready and then the other and then trying to get them ready for bed so we went ahead and got the babies ready and then we will actually once they're all ready for bed we will actually just go ahead and put them to bed and then we will finish up our night routine with the big girls and go from there good night girls good night okay babies were now in bed and our big girls were still in the shower and something I have started doing is just giving them their toothbrush while they're in the shower. If I try to get them to brush their teeth on their own it is a nightmare but if I just give them their toothbrush in the shower it's perfectly fine so that is what we do. One, two, what are you doing push-ups or yoga? yoga. Be on your toes. There you, go. there you go. That's down dog. Push your butt in there. There you go. You know what? I'm doing this. I'm a couple What? Yoga kids! No, 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 no. We don't have time for yoga kids, but I'm gonna brush your hair. And you've already brushed your teeth, right? Yep. Okay. So once both of the big girls are done being cleaned and showered, then we kind of tag team again. And let me tell you, this is probably one of my least favorite parts of the night and probably Lila's as well. And that is brushing of the hair. And I really would love to trim her hair or get it cut shorter, but she just insists that it has to be long. So, and it's beautiful. I love her long hair and her hair is beautiful, but it is such a nightmare at night trying to brush it because this process alone probably takes a good five to 10 minutes. So anyway, this time we will brush hair and kind of finalize anything, whether it's nails or cleaning their ears, whatever, we kind of just wrap all that up and then we will go into their bedtime routine. where it's like a yeah. camp and I had a lot of fun there. I made some new friends and I did a bunch of climbing. And we were at the new gym. <laughs> and there was like two bouncy houses. And they were big bouncy houses. Big bouncy houses. <laughs> Doing Storytime Podcast is kind of new for us, and the girls have been loving it. Tonight we picked one called Keep It Chill Daffodil, and the girls seem to really be enjoying this. Today we'd like to say a special thank you. David, Judah, Ella, and Anna. All right, good night. Love you. Hey. Love you. Sweet dreams. Ready to clean? <laughs> so now that the kids are all asleep, I will go ahead and start on cleaning the bathroom. I pretty much do this same bathroom routine every night. I like literally will wipe the toilets, the floors, the tub, the sink. I will wipe everything spotless every night. And I do this because I feel like it's easier to keep keep up with it if I just do a little bit every night versus me taking a day or two out of the week and cleaning bathrooms. I used to be on like a once to two, one to two times a week cleaning the bathrooms kind of schedule, but time does not permit me to do that anymore. If the kids are awake, I am not doing cleaning like this because they're gonna be running around making more messes and it honestly just seems counterintuitive to follow them around all day cleaning up after them. So if I just take this five minutes right before going to bed I can make sure it's all clean and we wake up to a clean house and it's easier to maintain. Also notice my trash can is actually a basket. I did not like any of the traditional baskets that they had at Marshall's when I went shopping for bathroom decor so I just got a basket and I think it's super cute. Although cleaning is obviously still a task I still find some sort of enjoyment and fulfillment out of it because 
For one, the kids are all in bed so I can walk around the house and accomplish things in peace and quiet and I know that for at least 12 hours it's gonna stay clean. So I will light a candle, maybe have a glass of wine, I had some sparkling water tonight and just kind of enjoy the process. At this point, I went ahead and started organizing that basket from all the miscellaneous items that were all over the house. And once I have this done, we will go ahead and start on the floors. Can I just say there's literally nothing sexier than a man that actually helps around the house. And that's my husband. He is every night. I honestly do not know what I would do without him because he is so helpful with the night routine. So this is us together knocking out the floors. Yes, I'm still using a shop vac and I'm not even complaining because it's working great. So anyway, I usually will start in the living room and he'll just kind of sweep everything into a pile for me and we just kind of keep working towards each other. And by the time I get to him, I just use the shop vac to just get his pile up as well. And once I'm finished with that, we will wrap up the last bit in the kitchen and fold a little laundry and call it a night. My OCD kind of kicks in a little bit when it comes to the kitchen sink. So I can just not, I can't go to bed if there's stuff in the sink. It honestly bothers me. And I have to deep clean the sink. There's something so satisfying to me about just like watching all the bubbles wash away everything from the day. It just kind of makes me feel like the day is complete. So I have to do this every night. This like thorough cleaning of the sink. It's just like my nightcap. I know that sounds super lame, but it is what it is. That's me. That's who I am. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean my sink every night before I go to bed. There's this old saying that always is in my head and it's failing to prepare is preparing to fail. And I never really took this so much to heart as I have when I had children because I literally cannot accomplish anything through the week if I do not prepare for it the night before. So something, a habit that me and my husband have gotten into is, whoa, is getting our coffee ready every night just so that I, we can get up and press the button. And something else that I actually have started um implementing for the kids as well as I will go ahead and make sure that I get their smoothies ready for the next morning because the twins seem to always wake up in this cranky I'm starving to death kind of mood so I always try to have their smoothies re ready for them that way it kind of like eases off the morning hanger My smoothies are never exactly the same. It's kind of based on just what I have. Luckily today I have a ton of frozen fruit. So the base, I usually try to always have a banana and then some kind of frozen berries. I had raspberries today and then I, I think I had pineapple. Oh yeah, and something cool about the pineapple is I actually save the center of the pineapple. I'm not sure if you've ever used like a fresh pineapple. But if you save the core, that's where most of the nutrients are at. And when you're using a blender or something like this, it actually blends completely smooth anyway. So anyway, I had cherries, mango, pineapple. And then if I'm using pineapple juice, I'll just use half pineapple, half water because it is ha does have a lot of sugar in it. And then I always try to add some kind of green. So lately I've been using kale because it's really dense in sulforaphane which obviously I'm obsessed with if you haven't heard me say sulforaphane once you've heard me say it a hundred times so yeah I will blend all that together oh and another thing that I usually always add but I am out is hemp seeds and ground flax seeds so that is my smoothie and I will go ahead and actually blend it and just toss it in the fridge for tomorrow lastly we will take the trash out and Tonight I actually had, I'm sprouting some bean sprouts, so I had to make sure I watered those. If you are interested in how I actually make these bean sprouts, just put a comment below and if I have enough people interested, maybe I'll do a quick little tutorial on that. But I watered my bean sprouts and I also am sprouting some broccoli sprouts right now. And the key to all this sprouting is you have to make sure that they have plenty of liquid. So I usually will rinse my sprouts a few times during the day, um, but for sure I will always do it at night, typically in the morning and at night. But yeah, so these are my bean sprouts and my broccoli sprouts. So yeah, that was our evening routine. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and you'd like more content like this. And have a great day. See you next Wednesday. Thank you for watching. Don't
thumbs up if you like our video.